Hello and welcome to Gabriel's 3D Printing. Today we're going to be looking at the Entitled Goose from Untitled Goose Game, uploaded by Guinea. Now you can print this model in two different ways. Number one, you can print it as one piece. Or number two, you can print it in multiple pieces and do an assembly. First things first, we're going to go down to the developer notes, see if they have any specifications. And they say, don't use rafts, yes supports. A resolution of either 0.15 or 0.1 millimeters is fine, and an infill of 15%. They also give you instructions for the assembly, so definitely read those if you choose to do the assembly version. Next, we're going to go to this blue button up here and download all files. And once you do, you're going to get a folder similar to this, with quite a few STLs. And like I said, you can either print to the single piece, which is the entire duct pre-assembled, or you can print everything in an assembly. Now, I've tried numerous times to print the parts individually, so it's easier for you to paint and whatnot, but I haven't had too much luck with that. I've tried all the developer specifications, but it seems that most low-rim printers can have that uh, appropriate clearance for this, meaning if you want to print the assembly, you're probably going to have to grab a screwdriver or a drill and make holes bigger, smaller, and then add hot glue. It's just another hassle. I highly suggest for any beginner to just print off the single one. They look identical. You can paint it uh, whatever color you want. Like I said, you won't be able to paint each piece separately, but you know you can paint it as needed. So I recommend printing the single. So click and hold on the single, and then drag it to your preferred slicer of choice, and give it a few seconds to load in. Once the model's finished loading in, you should see the duck in one entire piece. We're going to take this step by step and first go to profile to select a layer height. Now the developer does recommend a layer height of either 0.1 or 0.15, but that's geared more towards the assembly. For the entire piece like this, you should be fine with a 0.2 millimeter layer height, so select that. Next we're going to go to infill. Developer recommends 15% infill, so where it says infill density, we're going to change that number down to 15%. Supports, we will need supports, but we're not going to do the regular supports for this model. I believe the tree supports are going to be a much better option for this, so we'll wait on that, enable that in a second. Next, we're going to go to build plate adhesion. Developer said no build plate adhesion, so make sure it's not under raft or brim. If it says skirt or none, that's more than fine. Now for the tree supports, we're going to go down here to experimental, click on that. And we're going to click on tree supports. Now if you don't have this already, what you're going to do is you're going to hold your mouse over experimental, click on this gear, and you're going to search up tree support. And make sure all these are checked. And once they are, you should be able to see the tree support. So what I have to do now is just click on tree support and it's asking for a tree support branch angle. Now that's going to be an angle that's slightly lower than whatever you use for your regular supports. I usually use around 60 for my uh, regular supports. So for the tree support, I'm going to input 50 instead. And once you're done with that, all you have to do now is hit slice and give it a few seconds to render up. Once it's finished slicing, you should be given a time estimate of roughly 5 hours and 25 minutes, but that will depend on your printer and the settings you used, as well as a estimated filament usage of 39 grams. Now we always preview the print and take a look around the model, and we see that everything looks pretty good, nothing uh, weird or funky going on. So all we have to do now is hit save to file, and send the file over to your printer. Here's the model straight off the build plate. In order to easily remove it, I recommend starting at the behind and then working your way up from there. Once you do remove all the supports, you're going to have some rough edges near the beak 
and the bottom. So grab some sandpaper if you want and sand those parts up. Now they're not really too visible, so up to you if you want to sand them or not. Here's the model once all these supports are removed. Now the reason I'm holding the model rather than spinning it is because it's pretty hard to stabilize if it's not already a completely flat surface. Meaning you should have a very flat surface in order for this model to stand up on its own. Like I said the bottom are a little rough but with a little bit of sanding you should be more than fine. There's also a hole on the beak and that's so you can insert a magnet, a small round magnet this was intended to hold your keys so if you want to do that do that i think with the stability issues it might be a little hard to do so but you know that's what the model was really made for <laughs> 